Hey everyone, in the news this week, the rock singer Meatloaf died, allegedly of COVID, and if true then it would be fitting that he was killed by a bat out of hell. I told that joke to a friend who responded by singing, you took the words right out of my mouth. There was also a terrorist siege at a synagogue in Texas. This was reported by the BBC as, quote, a man from Leicester has been shot by police in Texas. And I thought, from nearly 5,000 miles away, a police officer must be a heck of a good shot. And also, another article in the BBC speculated about what would happen if the world went vegan. My answer is I suspect we'd never hear the end of it. But anyway, to be honest, most of this week's news has just been the ongoing fallout from last week's Partygate story. Things are now at the secrecy stage where Conservative MPs may or may not be writing to Graham Brady, the chair of the 1922 committee, which ultimately has the power to force a leadership election if 15% of MPs vote for one. Boris has somehow managed to largely distance himself, though, from the details, which is quite remarkable given that even Fred West eventually had to admit to having had people in his garden. Do MPs think that they stand to lose a seat at the next election? No. Well, that wouldn't be for another two years anyway, by which point many expect that these things will all be forgotten and the economy will be doing well again. And maybe don't want to potentially gamble everything on Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak when Boris, love him or hate him, does have a knack for winning elections. He's very much like Manchester City in that regard, including wearing the colour blue, as well as having very murky finances that none of us are allowed to know about. Talking about replacing leaders, though, the US has also seen a scramble at the top, and DC's worst kept secret is that senior people in the Democrat Party are trying to decide how best to replace Joe Biden, either at the next election or possibly beforehand if need be. The president gave one of his first camera pieces for weeks recently, in which he seemed confused, suffering from serious cognitive decline, and at one point accidentally said it would be okay if Russia invaded Ukraine, before later retracting that and saying he actually meant something completely different. But at this point, it's a bit like a small child covered in chocolate claiming to not know where the cake went. You know, I probably shouldn't joke because it's actually a tragic situation. Situation. He should be in a care home living out his last years in peace and quiet, not being dragged out in front of a rabid press corps every six weeks and expected to make nuanced political statements. President Trump said some crazy stuff, sure, but he did it to troll his opponents. No rational person thought that the jokes on Twitter were anything other than that, jokes on Twitter. And at least he knew there was a line in the sand when it came to greenlighting a land war in Europe. If Biden were to resign, then that would leave Kamala Harris in charge of things. But for the past 12 months, she's done little other than exuding competency. And it's really hard to stress just how unfavorably she is amongst the general public. As far as potential female presidents go, she's less popular than any other possible choice out there, whether it be Hillary Clinton or Elizabeth Warren. And, you know, it's even true when you allow for fictional presidents, you know, people like Medusa from Greek mythology. Crazy as it sounds, Hillary Clinton is right now actually considering a fourth run for the White House. And there is a genuine chance that the next election will be a literal rerun of Clinton versus Trump. Although that would at least make forecasting the outcome easy, because we all know how people vote if given those two options. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, let's subscribe.